Hi everyone, my name is Johanna. I'm a costume designer for theater, film, art, uh, theater, film, dance, and opera. Uh, it sounds a little crazy because it almost, for the most part, doesn't really exist in Singapore, which is a crazy thing to think about. Uh, I've lived in the United States for the last 11 years, and I've worked on Broadway shows like Book of Mormon, Wicked, Phantom of the Opera, Les Mis, I've worked at Lincoln Center. Um, I've done quite a lot of work, and in the two and a half months before COVID actually started, I designed a giant fantasy musical known as Shrek. Uh, I did a play at the Juilliard Drama School. I worked on a short film, and I also did a, a new commission of a premiere, a new dance work. So just so you understand, for, for me as a theater artist and a film artist for live entertainment, um, the pandemic basically brought all live entertainment to a halt, right? And basically overnight, everything vanished, everything dried up. So after two and a half months of work, I had done four shows and there was nothing left. And for some context, uh, sorry, for some context, uh, theater in New York, Broadway in New York brought in $11.9 billion and 87,000 jobs to New York City in the 2012-2013 season, okay? So that's a lot of people. Um, more than just the creative team, which is people like me or actors in the show, there are so many people that work on a Broadway production or on any kind of theater, life, entertainment production. Okay, there's set, there's lighting, there's sound, there's props, there's wardrobe, there's hair, there's makeup. There are so many people that are involved in this. There's a company manager, front of house staff who leads you into the show. There are, um, we use taxi drivers. People who come to see the shows, come, who come to New York to see the shows, pay for restaurants and hotels. Um, there are cobblers, journalists, you know, I, as a costume designer, I buy clothes at retail stores. And so theater is this large, huge economic web that actually brought in more money to New York City than uh, sports events did. So sports events like the NBA or the MLB, right? So Broadway as an industry is so big that it contributed so much to the, to the economy, and yet in one night, everything was gone. So it hurts when someone tells you you're not essential. I mean, okay, literally, right? You don't, maybe you don't need art to survive a pandemic. Um, but I think that, as our lovely MC said earlier, arts have historically been undervalued, and I think that's what really hurts. So, I mean, if you look at this, we were more non-essential than telemarketers. And I would, yeah. <laughs> So theater for me is more than just something that I make in a room or with collaborators. Theater is my voice. It's my medium of expression. It's how I tell people how I feel about the world. You know, but when your medium of art doesn't exist, what do you do? Um, when the pandemic started, people started making masks, right? And I kind of resisted making masks because I was really upset about everything, right? There were armies of women, uh, sewers and moms, mostly women, who were making masks in the US, and particularly because there wasn't enough PPE to go around, uh, not even in hospitals. And I resisted because I was grieving, I was upset, right? As time went on, though, I kept watching online, right? People were, rec like, I have costume Facebook groups of people who were, everyone was sourcing materials from each other, you know, people were sharing things. Fabric shops that I have long-standing relationships with were donating fabrics to people, so I could literally call up my friend and he would bring a bag of fabric to my door. Um, I saw this huge outpouring of generosity and kindness, and I realized that I needed to do something about it too, because I was just sitting in my room and crying and not really doing much. And by the way, I didn't get back until about five weeks ago. So after uh, I spent about three and a half months in quarantine in New York City, I stayed until the end of my graduate study. So I finished in May. And March, April, and May in New York City felt like a dystopian future Hunger Games. And I'm not even joking about this, OK? I, there were articles about digging mass graves in New York City for unclaimed deaths. There were articles about, um, I had friends who were moving bodies in hospital morgues because the, the hospital morgues were so full, they had to move them into trucks that lined the block around the hospital. I had friends who were so sick from COVID, but they were still not hospitalized because the hospitals were full and they couldn't take any more people, right? I have a friend who works at, at, as an ER doctor, you know, in a hospital near me, and 
He described it like a battleground. He was fighting a disease that no one knew anything about. And on top of all of this, uh, as protests, as the Black Lives Matter protests started, there were now helicopters above my building every day. So the sirens were constant, the helicopters were constant, and it felt like I was so helpless because I had no idea what I could do or how I could do anything to change any of the circumstances around me. So in all of this, I did the one thing that I knew I could do, which was to make art, and I am very grateful that I had the privilege to um, have, a, have a sewing machine and be able to have the skills, technical skills and knowledge to do all of these things. But it wasn't live theater, but I had to pivot and I had to do something. So these are some of the masks that I made. Um, I started making masks out of old costumes. I started making masks out of donated fabric. I gave them away for free. I was giving, mailing them out to friends, mostly artist friends who were also out of work and had nothing else. Um, I started making masks that couldn't protect you from a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> that was just for fun, right? Um, I started trying to figure out, uh, through my thesis, exploring my identity as a person of color in a white American system and what that actually meant. Uh, I was trying to understand racism in America. I was trying to understand racism in Singapore. And I was also trying to uh, I was drawing, I was painting, I was trying to figure out trauma from COVID-19, right? Because I had no other way of expressing some of all of these feelings that it had inside of me. And so art was me grieving for my career, art was me connecting with my family, drawing my nieces, uh, art was everything I could do to stay happy and healthy in a world that is metaphorically on fire for me. Um, I was making jewelry, I did printmaking. Some of this was in quarantine when I was in a hotel with the government. <laughs> I started weaving, I started doing embroidery. I started making my own clothes. I'm trying to commit to making all of my own clothes for one year so that I don't buy any clothes, and I started grounding myself in my heritage and learning how to do uh, traditional Peranakan beaded slippers, right? So people keep asking me, what's your next move? I have to honestly have to say I have no idea. Uh, part of it, I think, is there's a understanding in your brain that short-term planning is more productive than long-term planning right now because short-term planning is what your brain can handle, you know? And the other part of it is that I spent the last decade in an industry that has vanished overnight. There are no guidelines for us for how to reopen. But what I do know is in the last six months, I've created more art than I have in my entire life up until that point, right? So simply put, art is essential, right? Art creates hope for a better world. It helps you, gives, it brings light into the future. But there's not just one way to be an artist, right? So there's not one way to have a career, there's not one way to change the world, there's not one way to do anything. So whether it's a carefully taken photo for Instagram, whether it's your costume changes in a TikTok video, whether you are trying to make a loaf of bread, sourdough bread for quarantine, or whether you are or looking at like the Italians who, you know, with their lovely singing on the balconies and rallying together, right? Art is, it might not feed you and it might not provide you medical care, but it's everywhere around you, you know, everything around you is designed and is full of art, from your clothing to your mask, you know, to the phone that you're carrying, to the architecture you see around you. The only thing we have in this world right now is that change is the only constant. So go into your life, recognize the art in it, go make art, be flexible, and pivot. Thank you. <laughs>